now let's integrate uh, this mutation into our app. Let's copy this mutation and go to our text box component. Text box component it will be similar, uh, will, will be shared between our private to do's and our public to do's. So, first of all, let's import JQL from GraphQL tag. Now, let's define our mutation as insert to do. And we'll call JQL template string and we'll pay, paste our mutation inside. So, now what we need to do, we need to import mutation from reactor pole. In our render method, let's actually wrap our, um, our text box into mutation component. And similar to query, it will accept render prop which will get as first argument insert to do or any function name that you like. This will be used for executing mutation and you can destructure loading narrow states from it for error handling and such. Now in our render prop, we will re basically return the same view that we had previously, but we will take this submit function and copy it here. Now, in addition to just setting our state to empty, we want to actually execute mutation. So we'll e execute insert to do, and we will pass variables where we'll pass our text and is public flag. So basically, we're passing everything to mutation, and uh, we also need to specify similar as for the query, we need to specify the actual mutation in our mutation component. So let's save that and try to add a new to-do. Now if we reload our to-dos, we will see new to-do is added. But now we actually need to update our cache. So how do we update our cache? First of all, let's add update prop to our mutation component and we'll call update cache function. Our update cache function we will define it here and we'll get a bunch of parameters and we'll do the cache update. Now how we actually do that? Before going into cache update, let's uh, also import fetch to do's that we exported previously. Fetch to do's from to do's. So now it's time to update our cache. Our update cache method will get the actual cache and we can get the data and insert to this from it. So now to update our cache, first of all, we need to read the data from the cache. We can do so by executing read query um, method on the cache itself and we can pass fetch to this query. So basically it won't execute the query to the server, but it will read uh, the query, the, the actual data from, from the cache provided by Apollo. And remember we used in memory cache, so it's in memory. I also have to provide the same variables I provided previously, so it will be is public. Now, in the, for this data, we have the old data of our cache, meaning we'll have one to-do, right? Uh, actually, two to-dos now, because we just added one, uh, another one. Now, to update our cache, we also need to grab a new to-do from our insert to-dos mutation from the returning value of our insert to-dos. Remember this one? 
So the first value of, of this array, so it will be index zero. Now what we will create eventually, we'll create new data object, which will have our to-dos, and inside it will be an array of new to-do and to-dos, data to-dos, which data is, is the old data from the cache. Now, whenever we have new data, we need to write it to the cache. To write uh, the cache, we can do so by executing write query and setting our query as fetch to do's, variables is public, and we also need to provide data to write. So it will be new data. Let's save that. Now let's add a new to do. Let's see our cache update. And we'll see error here because we have is public uh, variable. So what we will do now, we just go to our to do's and change it to be consistent. So it will be is public here and will be also is public here and let's change our name is public and then let's add a new one new to the five and and we see our cache was updated 